A very warm welcome to IDFC First Bank Presents, Leaders of Tomorrow Season 12. I'm Ritwika Gupta. Tonight, we are bringing you two very special conversations. In the first segment, the spotlight is on Capital Land Group, a global company that has completed 30 years here in India. And in the second segment, we are decoding the opportunities and challenges in the sleep and comfort industry with none other than the sleep company. On the show tonight, we are first chatting with Andrew Lin, Group COO Capital Land Investment and Sanjeev Gupta, CEO Capital Land Investment India. Followed by a conversation with Priyanka Salot, co-founder of The Sleep Company. Andrew Sanjeev, thank you so much for joining us today on ET Now Leaders of Tomorrow. It's a pleasure speaking to you. So to begin with, um, firstly, congratulations on 30 years in uh, India. Um, Andrew, from a global perspective, tell us uh, what makes India a key market for growth, you know, in terms of your global strategy? Um, what makes India a strategic market? Thanks very much. Delighted to be here celebrating 30 years in India. It's an important and very meaningful milestone for capital and investments. I think when you look at India, all of the ingredients for um, it being an investable destination are as present as it's ever been in the last 30 years. We have strong GDP growth, we have an emerging middle class, we have a very pro-business environment, we have continuing reform in things like tax regulations yeah. and home ownership and so on and so forth. All of these things come in to bear and play a very meaningful role in our ability to take a narrative to our capital partners to say that India is increasingly and as investable as it has, it has ever been. And when you think about Capital Land's role uh, in positioning ourselves as a trusted partner in Asia, India has a very important role to play. Absolutely. Um, Sanjeev, coming to you, um, tell me over the last 30 years, how do you believe Capital Land's investments and developments in, has contributed to India's economic growth and the overall India growth story? I'm really quite proud to say that I'm associated with a company which really which built India's first IT park. The quality of IT parks that we take for granted in the industry today, I, you know, Ascendas really is the one who started it. Sure. Uh, and taking on from there again, the other businesses that we are in, which is logistics and data centers. Yeah. Even in logistics, we were right at the forefront when the whole grade A industrial evolution started in India post GST. In fact, we started about a year before that. So we were probably the second institutional investor and developer of grade A high quality industrial and logistics facilities in the country. And now again, in data centers, what we are building are state of the art tier three plus data centers which can cater to hyperscalers and other global tech companies. Sure. Uh, so I think quality of infrastructure uh, and the kind of job creation that these investments have done, I mean, I'm really happy to be associated with that. Fantastic. Andrew, coming to you, uh, talk to us a little bit about your investment plans and uh, some of the targets that you have in terms of expansion as well, if you can tell us. Absolutely. So we have, the, we have to walk the talk, uh, and as excited and committed as we are with uh, our plans for India, we have announced today that the intention is to more than double our funds under management in India from the current seven plus billion today to more than double that in, by 2028. So this actually accelerates our presence in India proportionately to where our plans for the rest of the world. So again, it goes back to the excitement, the confidence and the commitment we have for India as a whole. Right. And considering, Sanjeev, you know, um, Capital Land's uh, diversified portfolio, you know, and expansion plans in terms of, you know, you mentioned about the logistics parks, you know, there are a lot of technological centers, data centers, right? Tell me, where do you see uh, the maximum potential for growth? Which sector? See, actually, uh, the three businesses each have their own growth drivers. Uh, Data centers, because of the hyperscale growth and also because of the cloud infrastructure that the enterprise customer in India needs, mm -hmm. uh, 
logistics and industrial given that India is increasingly becoming a very important manufacturing uh, destination in Asia and IT parks again uh, India is really scaled up in terms of the capabilities it's, it offers to global companies today. I mean I was in uh, Pune last week in one of our parks visiting a large company which has 80% market share in the entertainment screens mm -hmm. that airlines have, you know. Right. Who would have thought that those airline screens are created in India? Absolutely. Nice. Um, Andrew, coming to you, you know, tell us what lessons, you know, uh, can be learned, you know, from doing business in a market that is so, you know, diverse like India, you know, how, how can that be applied to say other emerging markets? One thing we've learned operating across Asia is that Asia itself is a very heterogeneous region. You've got multiple political systems, multiple cultures, races, religions, languages, currencies, trade routes. And therefore, each country has its own idiosyncrasies, has its own attributes, has its own issues that we have to deal with and manage around. And again, it goes back to, I think, having a track record in India that's been built over 30 years mm -hmm. allows us to have a sense and a confidence that we can continue to successfully navigate those issues that have come across in the past and we have done so successfully, but also the issues that we are yet to see and will most certainly show up one way, shape or form. Sure. Um, Sanjeev, uh, smaller businesses also form the backbone of India's economy. Um, tell me, you know, is there a synergy uh, between Capitalan and some of the smaller businesses that you're collaborating with or if you can talk to us a little bit about that? So I would say that actually we do, we have had some startups taking space within our parks, especially in the Bridge Plus product that we have, which is more like a flex office space. Okay. Uh, and again, I would say that the data center side of things, also the hyperscale demand, some of it does actually cater to providing digital solutions to younger companies. In fact, that's one of the reasons why actually the hyperscale demand in India might grow faster. Uh, industrial, I would say, EV manufacturing, and there are a lot of interesting startups in the EV manufacturing space, and some of them are our tenants. Sure, all right. So, um, you know, Andrew, the theme for our show this season is powering entrepreneurs for the global stage. Um, given your presence, you know, you know, in Asia, and I would like you to probably tell our viewers, you know, uh, the show is watched by a lot of young entrepreneurs. Um, one piece of advice you have for them to really scale, uh, you know, from having a local presence to a global footprint, what would you like to say? Talent and human capital is by far the most important thing to success of an organization. If you are, what, what it means to us therefore is that we, we have to be the best at what we do. And therefore, I think in the sectors that Sanjeev and the team have chosen to grow in, business parks, data centers and logistics, we choose, we aim to be top three, top five. And in, if you're there, top three, top five, you can attract the best in class talent. And that allows them, us to put together a team of world class, you know, uh, uh, in order to execute and deliver on what we set out to do. In addition to that, by being a global platform, it then offers these young best-in-class talents the ability to then take their skills and transfer them to other jurisdictions, other sectors, other products that may be of interest to them. And this is, I think, the most important, one of the most important attributes for Capital Land Investment that we can showcase to young entrepreneurs today. All right, uh, same question to you, uh, Sanjeev. So I think if for a young entrepreneur in India, the biggest benefit is that you're in a market which has scale. Sure. And it's about being nimble, executing mm -hmm. well, and at the same time, not losing sight of values. I think yeah. these are three things I'd say. Right. And, you know, our show is called Leaders of Tomorrow. I also want to ask both of you your uh, leadership style, your approach to leadership. What does being a leader mean to you? Uh, let's start with you, Andrew. Leadership by doing, uh, servant leadership, humility, um, don't expect to do, ask someone to do something that you're not prepared to do yourself. Okay. I think leadership is to be able to get people to do things voluntarily. Mm -hmm. You know, that they feel fired up by the mission and they just, and, and they're excited by it, right? I think, I think that's what great leadership is. Fantastic. And finally, tell us, how do you plan to stay ahead, you know, of the curve in India's dynamic market? Sanjeev, let's start with you this time. So for us, every business that we've built so far has been founded on 
deep domain knowledge and expertise. So the right talent, uh, that's how we've scaled up. And, and any new business we get into also, that's going to be the foundation. All right. Andrew? Celebrate our wins, learn from our losses, be prepared to fail, fail fast, move on, never get complacent. Fantastic. Well, it was great chatting with the both of you. Thank you so much for being Thank on the show. Thank you for your time. Bye. It's time for a quick break here. We'll be back shortly. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching IDFC First Bank Presents, Leaders of Tomorrow Season 12. In this segment, we bring you an exclusive conversation with Priyanka Salot, co-founder of The Sleep Company. Listen in. Priyanka, thank you so much for being with us here today on ET Now Leaders of Tomorrow. It's a pleasure chatting with you today. Thank you, Ritvika. Absolutely. I'm so excited for today. Now, Priyanka, you have a very interesting journey from JP Morgan to PNG and now to the sleep company. I mean, it's, it's not just been interesting, but it's been very unconventional, right? So um, I want to first begin this interview by asking you, like, what inspired you to, you know, sort of start your own entrepreneurial venture? Like, what gave you that, you know, courage and motivation to leave your safe corporate job and get into business? No, absolutely. I, as you said, safe corporate job, right? But let me a little bit talk about it. So I think I did my MBA from IM Cal, and I think during campus days is when I went to JP Morgan. That was just internship. And then after campus, I worked for almost eight years with Procter & Gamble. I was the India head of their detergents and then diaper brand, sure. which is Ariel Tide and Pampers. I think at PNG, I found two things. One, I discovered my love for consumer brands. I realized I love products, I love brands that can actually make tangible difference in consumers' lives. And two, I think over the years I realized I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. And the reason is I wanted to do something bigger. I wanted to do something that can leave an impact and that can change millions of lives, right? So I, sure. I think during my days at PNG, I was always tossing around with ideas, what can be done, you know, but I was very clear it has to be a consumer brand. Right. And I think when Harshil and I delivered our son Ayan, and you know, I think as a new mom, I was really struggling with sleep. I just couldn't sleep. I was having a lot of back pain problems. And if you talk to any new mom, one thing they would tell you, you suddenly become very sleep deprived. And that's when, you know, um, it stuck me. The products in this category are far, far inferior to anywhere in the world. And I think I always tell people as a marketeer, you end up dissecting every ad you see. Yeah. You know, is it the right ad? Is it the correct ad? And you end up dissecting every product you use. And it just stuck us that this category is something where you spend one third of your life. You know, we all sleep seven, eight hours a day, 26 years of our life. And the product quality was far, far inferior. And that's right. when I think, you know, we became obsessed with how can we change it. Sure, absolutely. And I think, you know, ever since its inception uh, back in 2019, right till now, uh, the sleep company has seen a significant growth. Uh, so I just want to ask you, what would you say are the two, three, you know, disruptive elements, you know, that have uh, contributed to your growth strategy? And today, when you look at the market, where do you see the biggest opportunities? I think from literally day one, we've been very clear, we want to build a brand, uh, which can change the way people sleep and sit, which can really improve the way people sit, sleep and sit. And I think three things that I would say which really differentiates the sleep company from others. One is, um, you know, our patented, our innovative, disruptive products. We've got patented smart grid technology. We've got products which are genuinely today improving the way people sleep and sit in this country. Um, right, so our focus on developing products that can actually make a difference. Uh, I, I would say is first thing. Two thing, I think we are 
a very customer focused brand and when i say that i you know lot of times we use those words very loosely yeah. right but let me put it in a way today we are mostly d2c which is direct to consumer we control completely we are completely backward and forward integrated so we can control end to end customer journey right which i think is very very important for us third has been the way we are disrupting go to market in this industry if you look at typically you know the mattress industry or the chair industry has been a very very fragmented very inefficient channel mostly led through distributors retailers right. i think as a brand we are one of the very very few not just in this category but across the country which is going truly omni and you know i use a term called ropo which is research online purchase offline so today sure. our consumers they discover us online and majority of them end up buying us in our experience centers um, right so i think these are the three things i would say which is been at the center of what's been you know helping tsc disrupt this industry in the country yeah absolutely and i think you discovered your usp you know pretty soon because while others were focused on uh, price you know being competitive yeah. you know in terms of pricing your focus was on the product quality so if you could talk to us a little bit about that and also you know what role technology played in yeah. that no ritvika so i you know i always say one thing i think i learned in 8 years at png was that if you truly have a product which can solve a consumer problem that's the only way to build a long term brand you know we launched the sleep company in october 2019 but before that we worked on r&d for one and a half to two years sure and we said we need to develop a product that can actually have better ergonomics for consumer that can actually deliver more deeper peaceful sleep and we invented something we call smart grid it's a completely new material type so it's a mattress made up of polymer not foam not coir not cotton it's a mattress made up of polymer and we've got patent granted in india and multiple other countries across the world sure um, priyanka you're also expanding your offline presence yes. you know um, so uh, tell me how are you balancing your offline and online strategies and when it comes to online you know you have your you know big e-commerce players like amazon and flipkart so uh, how do you plan to stay ahead in that uh, competition yeah so i think i'll i'll answer it in two ways one today for our business we don't separate offline and online and i think that's the beauty we look at at is as d to c direct to consumer omni business right and the reason is because we realize today's consumer one it's not linear right is it that you're going to research online and you're going to buy online or you're just going to visit a store and you're going you're going to buy offline that doesn't happen in today's world right right whenever we visit a store we go check online you know when we want to visit a store we be- research before that you know what are the let's say mat- what's the best mattress brand in country i would find three four brands you know i would research so i think the way we look at the business is very omni that how do we continue to make sure one we drive awareness reach using digital as a medium yeah two how do we drive our distribution network using our own company owned company operated coco stores which are experience centers sure. that's how we look at the business So I think for that our intent has been today we've got 110 experience centers across the country in 30 plus cities and we will continue to exponentially grow that you know so double that year on year um however having said that yes we do have some business which is online on marketplaces like Amazon Flipkart but I think our intent always has been that we want to control and be direct to consumer and we have very limited reliance on marketplaces Right, uh, Priyanka. I read one of your interviews where you mentioned um, the importance of finding a calling rather than a career, and I found that very interesting. If you could elaborate that for us, yeah, I, you know, I think I believe in two things very, and I would reiterate to almost everybody at the Sleep Company. One is, I think we need, you know, we all have dreams, right? I think there are times when we are scared to take the plunge, and I think when I was a mother, that that time just gave me the guts to take the plunge. So I think I. one is very very important to dream big and just go behind your passions don't be scared right because you don't want to have the regret at the end of the day that you didn't try and if you make your passion your work you know you'll you'll automatically succeed you'll automatically have a great successful career but it's important to enjoy what you do and i think you know today um, it's been 
five, almost five years of journey at the sleep company and there is nothing else I would do more. We always tell everybody that this is our second baby. Uh, you know, so I think that's why I always say that take the plunge, go behind what you dream because if you want something, it will happen. You just need to put in the hard work, you just need to be persistent and it will happen. Absolutely. Finally, tell me, you know, how do you see the industry evolve, you know, in the next five, ten years? And uh, especially, you know, for the sleep company, you know, what is your vision? Um, what's next on the horizon? What can we expect? Oh, interesting one. So first, let's talk about the industry. You know, if you see it's a it's a big industry mattress itself in India is a two billion dollar market. And then you've got another one and a half billion dollar, you know, office chairs as a market. Right. So if you see, I think there are two phenomena that is happening. One is it's a very, it's a very fragmented market. One thing that you're seeing is a lot of consolidation happening. Uh, two, you're seeing consumers moving from unbranded to branded, you know, unorganized to un uh, organized. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what COVID played a little role in triggering that as well. And this is not just true for, let's say, you know, the industry in which the sleep company plays. I think this is true for a lot of consumer brand industries. Uh, I think what happened, if you see one of the changing consumer behavior we see, and Ritvika, if you ask me, yeah. I think before starting the sleep company, did I know what I was sleeping on? No. I never cared what I was sleeping on, right? Yeah. But I think what happened post-COVID, if you see today's consumer, they're becoming very health conscious. Yeah. They want to invest in products which are good for their health, which are good for their family. You know, you just need to tell me how is your product better and how is your product good for me and my family. And I think with that consumer behavior change, you know, we at the sleep company want to be at the forefront of that. We want to play at the cusp of, you know, changing consumer behavior and changing industry dynamics. And I think that's where I think has really helped the sleep company because we feel today's consumer care about the products and not just the price. Absolutely. And and the sleep company, if you see, we've been growing, we've been almost doubling business year on year. And I think for us, the intent would be, you know, we continue to innovate great products that can help our consumers. We continue to expand our distribution network. Today, 110 stores. By end of this year, we want to be 150. And I think in next two years, you'll see us being there around 300 Coco stores. And, you know, continue to build a great brand and be one of the most loved consumer brand and one of the leader brand in this category well more power to you and all the very best thank you so much for chatting with us priyanka thank you so much absolutely a pleasure and with that it's a wrap on this episode of idfc first bank presents leaders of tomorrow season 12 we hope you enjoyed the conversations thank you for watching goodbye